Welcome to the Victory Education Lounge. I am your host Maurice and we're thrilled to have you join us for another informative episode. Before we dive in, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below sharing your thoughts or experiences. Your engagement helps us create more valuable content and builds a community dedicated to health and wellness. Today we're exploring part 145 of our series, Tracking Progress, Monitoring Insulin Sensitivity. Understanding how to effectively track your insulin sensitivity can be a game changer in managing your metabolic health. Let's dive into some practical ways to monitor your progress. Do you know how to track your insulin sensitivity effectively? It's a question that's becoming increasingly important in the world of health and wellness. But first, let's understand the concept of insulin sensitivity. Insulin, a hormone produced by the pancreas, plays a critical role in regulating our body's metabolism. It allows cells in our bodies to take in glucose from the bloodstream and use it as a source of energy. Insulin sensitivity, then, is a measure of how effectively our cells respond to insulin. High insulin sensitivity allows the cells to take in glucose more efficiently, reducing the amount of insulin needed. On the other hand, low insulin sensitivity, often referred to as insulin resistance, means the cells don't respond well to insulin leading to higher levels of insulin in the blood. Why does this matter? Well, insulin resistance is a key player in the development of several health conditions, including type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. It's like an undercurrent that silently affects your health long before symptoms manifest. By keeping track of your insulin sensitivity, you can gauge your body's metabolic health and take proactive steps to improve it. This can be achieved through lifestyle modifications like regular exercise, a balanced diet, adequate sleep, and stress management. However, insulin sensitivity isn't a static measure. It can change based on various factors, from your daily meal choices to your exercise routine, and even the amount of sleep you get. That's why it's important to monitor it over time to understand how your lifestyle choices are impacting your metabolic health. Think of it like a compass guiding you on your journey to optimal health. It can help you make informed decisions about your diet, exercise, and lifestyle habits. The more you understand about your body's response to insulin, the better equipped you are to make choices that promote good health. Stay tuned as we delve into practical ways of monitoring your insulin sensitivity. In the following scenes, we'll explore different methods you can use to track your progress and take control of your metabolic health. Let's embark on this journey together, towards a healthier, more vibrant you. First up, we have fasting blood glucose. This is a measure of the sugar levels in your blood after an overnight fast, giving us a snapshot of how your body is managing glucose when you're not eating. It's a simple process that you can do at home with a glucose meter. However, it's worth noting that factors like stress, sleep quality, and even the previous night's dinner can influence your results. So, it's not just about what the number reads, but also about understanding the context of your lifestyle. Let's consider John, for example. After three months of lifestyle changes, including better nutrition and regular exercise, he noticed his fasting blood glucose dropped from a concerning 110 mg per deciliter to a healthier 95. This is a simple and effective method to start tracking your insulin sensitivity. Next, let's explore the hemoglobin A1C test. This test, also known as HbA1c, provides an average of your blood sugar levels over the past two to three months. It's a valuable tool in assessing how well you're managing your blood sugar over time, rather than just at a single point. You see, hemoglobin, the protein in your red blood cells that carries oxygen, gets sugar stuck to it. The more sugar in your blood, the more gets stuck. This test measures that sugar-coated hemoglobin. The pros? It gives a long-term picture of blood sugar control. The cons? It requires a blood draw and doesn't show day-to-day -day fluctuations. Let's look at a practical example. Sarah started exercising more and reducing her carbohydrate intake. After six months, her A1C decreased from 6.2% to 5.7%, indicating improved insulin sensitivity, the hemoglobin. A1C test provides a longer-term picture of your blood sugar control. Moving on, we have the Oral Glucose Tolerance Test and HOMA-R. Let's start with the Oral Glucose Tolerance Test, often abbreviated as OGTT. This test measures how your body responds to a glucose load over a specific period of time. It's like a stress test for your insulin response. You consume a drink with a high glucose concentration and then your blood sugar levels are measured at intervals. 
This process can give a detailed picture of how your body manages a sudden influx of glucose. However, the OGTT can be a bit time-consuming and it does require multiple blood draws, which may not be everyone's cup of tea. For example, consider Tom. After making dietary changes, his 2-hour glucose level in his OGTT improved from 155 mg per deciliter to 120 mg per deciliter. This indicated an improved response to glucose, suggesting better insulin sensitivity. Next, we have the HOMA-IR, which stands for Homeostatic Model Assessment of Insulin Resistance. This calculation uses your fasting glucose and insulin levels to estimate insulin resistance. It's a bit more complex than some of the other methods, but it provides a numerical value for insulin resistance, which can be very useful for tracking changes over time. On the flip side, it does require both glucose and insulin tests, which might not be readily available to everyone. Let's take Maria as an example. Over a year, her HOMA IR score decreased from 3.5 to 1.8, indicating improved insulin sensitivity. This change was a result of her consistent efforts to improve her metabolic health through diet, exercise, and lifestyle changes. In summary, both the OGTT and HOMA-R offer detailed insights into your body's insulin response. They might require a bit more effort and resources than some other methods, but the information they provide can be invaluable in understanding your metabolic health. Remember, knowledge is power, especially when it comes to your health. With these tools, you can take control of your insulin sensitivity and make informed decisions about your lifestyle and diet. Both these methods offer detailed insights into your body's insulin response. We also have waist circumference and the triglyceride to HDL ratio as indicators. An often underappreciated metric in the realm of insulin sensitivity is waist circumference. As you may know, abdominal fat is not just a cosmetic concern but is closely linked to metabolic health. It's been found that an excess of fat around the waist is a clear sign of insulin resistance. Tracking your waist size is a simple and practical way to monitor changes in your metabolic health. It's easy to measure at home with a tape measure, making it accessible to everyone. However, it's important to note that while it's an indicative measure, it isn't a direct measure of insulin sensitivity. For instance, David, a fitness enthusiast, saw his waist circumference decrease from 40 inches to 36 inches, showcasing an improvement in his insulin sensitivity after adopting a healthier lifestyle. Shifting gears, let's talk about the triglyceride to HDL ratio. This is another useful indicator of insulin resistance. This ratio can be obtained from a standard lipid panel, a common blood test. A higher ratio often suggests insulin resistance. The caveat here, however, is that it may not be as specific as other measures, but it's still a valuable piece of the puzzle. To illustrate, consider Lisa's case. She had a triglyceride to HDL ratio of 5 to 1. After focusing on her metabolic health, her ratio improved to 3 to 1, indicating better insulin sensitivity. In essence, waist circumference and the triglyceride to HDL ratio are two accessible measures that can provide insights into your insulin sensitivity. While they may not directly measure insulin sensitivity, they are closely linked and can help you monitor your progress. They also have the advantage of being easy to obtain, as they don't require specialized tests or equipment. So, remember, don't overlook these seemingly simple metrics. They can provide a wealth of information and are a great way to keep track of your metabolic health. These measures, though indirect, can be very informative. Finally, we have Continuous Glucose Monitoring or CGM. This high-tech device allows for real-time tracking of glucose levels, providing a comprehensive picture of your glucose patterns throughout the day and night. It's like having a 24-hour personal glucose assistant. It works by using a tiny sensor inserted under the skin that measures glucose levels in the tissue fluid. One of the major advantages of CGM is its ability to provide immediate feedback. For example, you can see how different foods, exercise, and even stress can affect your glucose levels. This kind of detailed insight can be extremely helpful in fine-tuning your lifestyle for optimal insulin sensitivity. However, it's important to note that CGM can be quite expensive and may require a prescription. Let's consider Mark's case. Using a CGM, he noticed that his post-meal glucose spike significantly reduced after adopting a low-carb diet. Isn't that fascinating? CGM offers the most detailed insights into your glucose patterns. Now that we've covered the methods, let's discuss some key considerations. It's essential to remember that consistency is king when tracking insulin sensitivity. 
Whether you're measuring fasting blood glucose, waist circumference, or using a continuous glucose monitor, aim for consistent conditions to ensure your data is as accurate as possible. In summary, we've explored seven methods to track and monitor insulin sensitivity, each with its pros and cons. From simple at-home measurements like fasting blood glucose and waist circumference, to more complex tests like the HOMA IR and oral glucose tolerance test. We've seen how triglyceride to HDL ratio can give us insights into insulin resistance and how continuous glucose monitoring provides real-time glucose data. Each method provides a piece of the puzzle and together they can paint a comprehensive picture of your metabolic health. Remember, tracking your insulin sensitivity is a powerful tool in managing your metabolic health. Keep learning, stay consistent, and see the changes unfold. In conclusion, monitoring insulin sensitivity can be a powerful tool in managing your metabolic health. By regularly tracking your progress using methods like fasting glucose, A1C, OGTT, HOMA IR, waist circumference, lipid ratios, and continuous glucose monitoring, you can gain valuable insights into your body's response to different foods, activities, and lifestyle changes. Remember, the goal is progress, not perfection. Every step towards better insulin sensitivity is a victory, no matter how small. Use these tracking methods as a guide and motivation, but don't let them define your worth or happiness. Thank you for joining us in the Victory Education Lounge for this exploration of tracking insulin sensitivity. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with friends who might benefit from this information. Don't forget to subscribe for more content on health, wellness, and personal development. Until next time, stay informed, stay proactive, and keep striving for victory in all aspects of your life. Disclaimer. The information provided in this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended as medical advice. Any health-related decision should be discussed with a licensed physician or qualified healthcare professional, especially if you have existing health conditions or are taking medications.